this video, we take a closer look at the brand Salacor. This lens, video and image samples using the Sony A6000 and three reasons why you should buy one now. Salacor, cameras and lenses for the man who wants quality, but would rather not pay the usual price. Now personally, I find this guy very relatable. Salagor was a photography equipment supplier best known for its third-party lenses. It's more than the equivalent being Sigma or Tamron. From 1956, ARC started using the Salagor brand name. It gained sales success in the late 60s to about the early 90s, until it filed for bankruptcy around 2011. Salagor had a comprehensive catalogue. Just like Sigma and Tamron today, these third-party lenses were a great alternative to the OEM but offering good optical quality at reasonable prices. Looking at the marketing at the time, there was a common theme of putting emphasis on, hey, can you see a difference between these two photos? No? Well, buy our lens because it's more affordable. I love this honest advertising. In five or 10 years time, there might be something better. Like other photography equipment suppliers at the time, such as Vivitar, Salago was all about marketing, while it commissioned its lenses from Japan. The company worked with manufacturers such as Kawanon, Kobari, Komine, Sun Optical, Tamron and Tonica. But wait, there's more. Salagor lenses were sold under alternative brand names in different countries. The only difference being in appearance and branding. Although the Salagor brand name left us in 2011, its name still remains in our hearts and in Facebook Marketplace as very affordable lenses. The 85-205 Salagor Macro Zoom Lens with the f-stop of 3.8. This lens is huge by all standards measuring in at 9.5 inches fully extended, weighing in at 792 grams. I was unable to locate exact official documentation about this lens, but this is the closest I've found. It's a total can of worms to figure out who the actual manufacturer of this lens was. I'll leave all references below in the description for anyone willing to further investigate. My particular sample is the M42 mount, so here I've got the M42 to NEX or E-mount adapter to fit my Sony A6000. The f-stop ranges from 3.8 to 22. The zooming mechanism is contained within the body of the lens, justifying its length. The focusing function causes the lens to extend or retract. For some size comparison, this is the Sony 18-55 kit lens. This is the Sony 16mm pancake lens. And finally, this is what it looks like with the Sony A6000 attached to the lens. It's a lens you attach your camera to, not the other way around. Photography is a fun and interesting hobby, but bringing a manual lens into the picture adds another layer of challenge to it. Gets you more hands-on with the fundamentals of photography, like setting the aperture and manually focusing for the perfect picture. The old glass and optical imperfections result in chromatic aberration, where the lens fails to focus all colours to the same point. This adds character and a vibe to the photos. These photos from one view has a retro look, they also look like they have more of a story to tell compared to modern auto lenses. Lenses are very affordable and accessible. In 2021, prices on Facebook Marketplace start from $40. I would watch out for lenses with fungus, dust, and scratches. Adopting and using one of these lenses will give them another cycle of life, stopping them from ending up in landfills. If you own a modern camera with just a kit lens and have not experimented with vintage lenses, I highly recommend the experience. For the financial investment, this lens gives back a lot. For me, going out with this lens and taking photos has been a meditative experience. Hours can go by without realizing I've taken thousands of photos and if I had to pick my top 10, more photos come from vintage lenses than the modern auto lenses.